Good morning. My name is Matthew Johnson, and welcome back for another morning devotional. As you may have noticed, it's a new month, so we decided to change up how the uh, devotional looked and sounded, and so I hope that you enjoy this new look. We try to keep it fresh every now and again, because seeing the same thing over and over can get a little monotonous, is it not? So, yeah. (laughs) Well, today we're going to go ahead and have the same format, at least for today, and we're going to get started first with announcements. So the announcements are as follows. Please join us this Sunday for our homecoming worship service. It's going to be at 9 a.m., and our guest preacher will be Scott Osterberg. He was here a while back, about 20-some years ago, I believe, and he has agreed to come back and preach for us on this one day to celebrate another year in the the life of this church, which is Glencoe. And then also, let's not forget about the Brunswick Stew that's coming up. It is a fundraiser that we do for the church to help pay for the ministries that we have here. And we are going to be selling that. More details will be coming soon on that. And the Stew will be around Thanksgiving. It'll be right before Thanksgiving sometime around there. I'll give you more details as we sort all that out, but I promise it is coming soon. This upcoming Wednesday, a week from yesterday, will be our first GLOW event uh, since the pandemic, which is going to be called Fall for Jesus. We did something like this last year, and it was a big hit. People had fun, and so we're going to try to do it again this year. But this time, we're going to do some things a little differently. We're going to have a few different activities, of course, and we're going to try to make it as safe as possible. We're not going to have it inside. It's going to be all outside under the pavilion, and so we're going to try to keep each other safe in that way. We are also having a fundraiser for the United Methodist Women, and what we're doing is we are selling That's My Pan items. Now, if you've ever never heard of That's My Pan, what it is is basically they got all these different uh, personalized items or cookware, if you will, that you'll be using. For example, they have pans. That's my pan. They got mugs. They've got cutting boards. They've got all sorts of stuff that you can personalize, put your name, and put some other uh, little uh, emblems and pictures on it. It's really cool, and uh, you will see the link on the screen. You can either sign up online and have it sent here to the church, or you can have it sent to your home. Now, it is important to note that it will cost more if you do send it to your home, so we don't recommend that unless you live further away or if you're afraid of getting out or afraid of having that delivered to you by someone here at the church. So do what you feel is best, Um, but we hope that you'll be able to purchase some of these. Lindsay and I have already decided we're going to purchase a pan, and it's going to have our name on the the lid there and everything, and it's going to be really cool. I'm really looking forward to it, and um, it's really nice to have something that's so personal that it's actually yours, and it's it's not something that somebody else could necessarily have because with mine and my wife's name on it, it means that it is literally ours. And that's very special to me, and I think it's very special to many, which is why we thought that this would be a good fundraiser for folks. And don't forget to follow us on our social media account. This social media is how you can keep up with what's going on in the life of this church. As you will see in the screen before you, we have a Facebook, a Twitter, an Instagram, and a YouTube page. And with all of that, you can find us at, at Glencoe UMC. Now, when you go to YouTube, you will find all of the videos that have been done during the quarantine or during the pandemic, which I have put out or... I have worked on to for us to put out, which will include services, devotionals, things for kids that are glow related. All of the above is found in that. And so you can definitely go there and find every video and you can catch up on them. And if you don't know much about YouTube or something like that, go to our website and go under the media tab and you will find every video from now until when we got started with the videos there as well and you can click on it and it'll take you to the video and if you have any questions or want to contact me directly or personally just send me an email at pastor at glencounc.org and i hope that you are able to join us in 
living out the life of this church. And to do that, I know that social media can help you know what's going on so that way you can continue to be a part of this church and the life of this church. And then lastly, I just wanted to emphasize that we are going to have a trunk or treat this month which is going to be the last day of the month on Halloween. And we're going to have that trunk or treat in our parking lot and people are going to stand out there and we're going to, you just would go around and get candy or have your kids get the candy from each trunk. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to do it in a safe way where every person at the trunk will be responsible for handing out the candy or we will have that candy in little treat bags already it just depends on who (laughs) is whose trunk it is and how they want to go about doing that so we are going to try to keep things as safe as possible and all that good stuff but we do hope that you'll join us because as hard as it's been being isolated and cooped up and not with each other or friends and family this would be a good opportunity a good time to get out and do something with family and do something with friends but at a safe distance because let's face it one of the things i grew up like looking forward to was trick-or-treating and here will be a safe environment for that to take place where we are trying to control the spread of germs as well as it's in a it's in one space and you're not going from house to house necessarily which can be dangerous So I hope and pray that you will be able to come and join us for this fun time. And with that, friends, let us now turn to our scripture for today, which comes from Matthew chapter 9, verses 2 through 8. Hear now the word of God. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. And when the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. Our passage today comes from a place where Jesus had just sailed over to this spot into Capernaum. And then he is working on these ministries. He's just traveling around in Capernaum where he was living at the time. And what you end up finding is Jesus in this spot where he sees these people with great faith. And he comes up and brings this man who is paralyzed. And what does he do? He says, your sins are forgiven. Now, why is that important? Well, back then, one of the the reasons for illnesses were because it was your sinfulness. Like you were born with sin from your families. That's why you were born with a chronic illness, such as being a leper or something like that. And then uh, when things happen to you and you actually become paralyzed if you weren't born with it or something like that, some sort of illness or uh, deformity, then it is seen as a, as a sign uh, that you are sinful because you are not of the normal. You are seen as different. And then these scribes are there, right? They're like, hey, what are you doing? And they start telling everyone around. They're like, he's blaspheming. He's doing something wrong. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. I'm not doing anything wrong. And the thing is, is the scribes were seeing him as not having authority. They were questioning his authority here. And Jesus tells them that he is given authority because he is the Son of Man. He is the human one. He is the one that is living on earth that has authority from God to perform deeds and acts. And then here's the thing. You see right after that this part where 
you have the crowds who are astonished by what happens because Jesus says, get up and walk away to the paralytic. And then you have these crowds in awe. And this is an amazing event. And they're all just shocked. But then it says in the closing of our passage today, and they glorified God, a.k.a. they worshiped God, they gave it up to God, who had given such authority to human beings. And the reason why this is here is Matthew is trying to emphasize the authority that is given to the disciples in in chapter 10, in like the first verses of chapter 10. And when you look at the end of Matthew with the Great Commission, you see how Jesus gives them authority to go out into the world and make disciples of Jesus. Now, what do we take from this passage? Well, there's many things that we could take from this passage. But today, I want us to take one little piece. One little piece. And that is the thought of what does it mean to have authority from God. As disciples of Jesus, as followers of Christ, we have authority from God to go out and perform great deeds to perform miracles, to clothe those who need them, to feed those who are hungry, to provide a home for the orphan, all of that. We are given this opportunity to be someone with authority. It's simple and it's it's, it's also complicated to say that. It's in this day and age, it's one thing to have an authority. To have authority, you are to be a certain way, right? You have to tell people what to do. You have to do this and do that. But that's not what authority is in this manner. When Jesus was given authority, he used himself, he saw himself as a servant leader. He led through example. And that authority to do things on God's behalf was always Jesus doing things for others, his service towards others, his servitude, if you will. So when we do things for the greater good, when we do things for people, what are we doing? We are actually allowing our authority to be seen by others. When we are doing things in the name of God that helps our fellow humans, then we are doing things in the name of God. What's really interesting here is that Jesus is literally trying to contrast these scribes who are saying that he is doing something that is not of God, or he is trying to say something that is not true. And here's the thing. Jesus says, no, no, I am the Son of Man. Even though he doesn't say literally, I am the Son of Man, when he says uh, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, and the fact that he had just forgiven sins of this paralytic man, he's basically saying, I am the Son of Man, without saying it directly, if you will. We have this authority by God. We have this authority by Jesus, who gave us authority when he breathe the Holy Spirit onto us. When He gave us the authority to go out into the world and do, He gave us the authority to be the hands and feet. And so it's really important that when we think about doing things, we think about what does it mean to have authority? It means that we have the responsibility. We have the capacity and the responsibility to go and do great things. And earlier I said, you know, perform miracles, perform healings, things like that in regards to us. When I say that, I'm talking about the things that we can feasibly do as human beings. Medical professionals and all that, they do healing and they can work miracles a lot of times. But you know what? All of us normal folk that don't have medical degrees can do a lot of things to help others. We can feed those who need feeding. We can give them money. We can help give them clothes. We can help get them on a path that they need to be on to help them in situations that they may be stuck in. We can help support them if they're struggling with issues. We all struggle with our own issues. Some are worse than others. 
to be a follower of Jesus and to have that authority that is given to Jesus, which Jesus gave to us, which comes, of course, from God, means that we need to be there and be a servant to all of those around us. So as you go into your weekend, remember that you have authority from God. You have authority from God. And that you are special and precious. And because you have that authority, God wants you to go out and be responsible with that authority and showing what it means to follow God, to follow Jesus, to be on that narrow path. Go in peace, friends. Serve the Lord always and always give thanks and glory to God. Amen. Amen.